Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 26, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Always great to see the different tools that our handlers create to make life easier. And of course, by sharing them, they're making life easier for all of us. Jim just... Uh, provided a couple updates for two tools that he's maintaining. One is his low Indian hex to IP tool, Python script that converts hexadecimal to IP addresses in various formats, does support IPv6. We'll need tool, and of course, often you find like in memory dumps or such these IP addresses in the uh, hexadecimal format that they then want to convert into something more readable. There's also 6.py that uh, Jim updated. It just creates a number of hashes for particular files and now also supports taking input directly from standard in. And Apple today released their expected updates for Mac OS in part they were expected because last week we did receive updates for iOS, iPad OS and Vision OS, but we didn't receive any security details because well, they were held back to today when Apple released the related Mac OS updates. And indeed there, are, first of all, there are only two vulnerabilities that are being addressed here. At least Apple describes them as two vulnerabilities, but uh, they actually have the same CVE number. What's probably going on here is, well, both of these are out of bound write vulnerabilities that uh, occur when an image is uh, being processed. One of the vulnerabilities is in core media. The other one is in WebRTC. So it's probably the same mistake that was just made in two different places, which is why we get one CVE, but two vulnerabilities in Apple's updates. These two vulnerabilities do apply across all the patched operating systems. That includes uh, macOS Sonoma 14.4, which is now 14.41, macOS Ventura 13, iOS iPadOS 17, and iOS iPadOS 16, and then of course, Apple Vision OS 1.1.1. These vulnerabilities were found by Google's project Zero. Uh, Nick uh, Galloway is uh, credited uh, with uh, these vulnerabilities. Typically, Google Project Zero will release details sometime after the release of a patch. So once we have those details, maybe we'll learn what exactly went wrong here. And malicious commits to GitHub and malicious uh, Python libraries are certainly nothing new, but we do have a great write-up by Checkmarks with details regarding a quite sophisticated attack that led to the compromise of about 150,000 developers, apparently. The attack overall is a little bit complex to sort of completely cover it here in the podcast. So I refer to the blog post for additional details. But the attacker did a lot right here. It was not sort of one of those simple, hey, let's uh, submit a quick uh, malicious commit and hope that it gets accepted. But uh, there was some extensive and long lasting work here behind this attack. For example, the attacker hosted a fake or backdoored version of the Colorama package uh, on their own uh, Python mirror. This uh, particular site was also named rather uh, clever. Uh, usually Python packages from PyPy come from pythonhosted.org. Well, this one was pypyhosted.org, so uh, a very plausible and likely name. After doing so, the attacker did then submit commits and pull requests to other repositories that contained a lot of benign code, but then also an update to the requirement.txt file, changing the host name for the Colorama download. And that, of course, is something that's often overlooked, uh, where a review often focuses on the actual code and not on something that looks like a fairly minor and uh, somewhat reasonable update to the requirement.txt file. Interesting lessons here to be learned. 
important about uh, code review and also being uh, careful about uh, GitHub accounts. Uh, this attacker did hijack a number of well-respected uh, GitHub accounts, accounts, which then also helped spread this malicious code to other repositories. Indicators of compromise and lots more detail can be found in Checkmark's uh, blog posts. An update, there is one I want to mention, OpenVPN Connect updated their Windows client. It fixes four different vulnerabilities. There is a stack overflow. Uh, there is some productivity remote access, malicious plugins that could be loaded, and an integer overflow in the tab driver. Definitely something that you do want to update if you are using the OpenVPN Connect client. So this is this very specific client. You typically download it from the OpenVPN website. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.